Coming up on DTNS, Apple angers developers, Oculus improves the Quest and teases augmented reality Ray-Bans, and Sony has some announcements of its own. This is the Daily Tech News for Wednesday, September 16th, 2020 in Los Angeles. I'm Tom Merritt. And from Studio Redwood, I'm Sarah Lane. In Salt Lake City, I'm Scott Johnson. And uh, I'm the show's producer, Roger J. We just spent a uh, good day internet watching the Sony PS5 announcements. If you want to hear us uh, talk along with that, we had a good time talking about some of the games and histories. Become a member and get that show, patreon.com slash DTNS. Let's start with a few tech things you should know. GoPro's Hero 9 black camera is now on sale. It has a front-facing color display, 20 megapixel stills, 5K video at 30 frames per second, or 4K at 60 frames per second, and a removable 720, 1720 milliamp battery. A max lens mod for a wider frame and horizontal leveling will be sold for $99 separately in October. The GoPro Hero 9 black is now available for $449.99 or $349 when purchased with a year of GoPro Plus subscription. That's $50 per year. Uber safety driver Rafael Vasquez, excuse me, <clears throat> has been charged with negligent homicide in the death of Elaine Hertzberg in Tempe, Arizona in 2018. Vasquez was watching a episode of The Voice on her phone when the self-driving car hit and killed Hertzberg. Vasquez plead not, pleaded not guilty and was released until trial scheduled in February. Uber uh, was not ch uh, charged but the U.S. NTSB said Uber's, quote, inadequate safety risk ass uh, assessment procedures and ineffective oversight of vehicle op operators were contributing factors. Amazon Music now offers podcasts with more than 70,000 shows on the platform. Some shows are exclusive, like the first one from DJ Khaled. Not another one, the first one. And uh, Disgraceland from iHeartMedia is going to be an Amazon exclusive starting in February. AT&T CEO John Stankey said that the company is considering offering less expensive wireless phone plans subsidized by advertising next year. Stankey said that the ads could reduce a bill by $5 or $10. Boost Mobile, Virgin Mobile, and Amazon have all tried ad-supported phone plans in the past. Stankey said an ad-supported HBO Max would be foundational to the offering and that engineers are creating unique customer identifiers to identify users across multiple devices. Oh, well, that's reassuring. The U.S. Department of Justice charged five Chinese men and two Malaysian men with attacks on more than 100 video game firms in the U.S., France, Japan, Singapore, and South Korea. The attackers used fraud and hacks to obtain in-game currency and items to sell. This was a money-making enterprise. The Chinese attackers also engaged in brute force attacks, spear phishing, and supply chain attacks, all in the pursuit of getting access to the network so they could do this in-game fraud. Both Malaysian men have been arrested, and the five Chinese attackers are considered fugitives in China by the United States. Sony, who will be a lot in the news today, denies that it has reduced its production of PS5 units. Bloomberg reported that Sony would reduce manufacturing by 4 million to 11 million units by March due to slow, or excuse me, low yields from AMD's system on a chip. They are working with AMD once again this generation. Sony told Game Biz, or excuse me, GameIndustry.biz, quote, the information provided by Bloomberg is false. We have not changed the production number for PlayStation 5 since the start of mass production, unquote. All right, let's talk a little bit about what Sony just announced moments ago, Scott. Well, we watched them show a whole bunch of trailers, and they also <laughs> uh, gave us a price and a release date. But uh, real quick here, Sony previewed launch uh, titles for the PlayStation 5, and then we finally have a price. So here's what you're looking at, $499.99 for the PlayStation 5. That is the big one, the one with an optical drive. When I say big, they're about the same. But that one has an optical drive, not digital only. That's available November 12th. Uh, and let's see, or November 19th, kind of depends on where you are in the world, different uh, release schedule. Uh, and a digital PS5 edition for $399.99 and PlayStation Plus collection for PS5, access to the entire collection of PS4 games uh, on the PS5. However, a little of that is still unclear to me. It's not all games, it's some, and it's ha kind of handpicked. And I'm, I got to get my head around what they did with Plus. It just barely happened, so not a lot of time to digest that. But Pricing is interesting. Um, I, they're lower than I predicted. I was predicting $699 for the big one and $499 for the little one. And they've gone lower than I expected. I have a feeling. And, and that, by quite quite a bit, right? Yeah, a lot more than I thought. I, yeah. I, I can't say for sure, none of us can, that this wasn't a reaction to Microsoft's very aggressive pricing structure for 
the now leaked and now officially announced uh, Xbox Series S and well, X they match prices. Xbox, right? Yeah, exactly. So the fact that that this is lower than most people were predicting, including like industry experts, tells me they probably had a last minute little shift, a hundred bucks down here or there. Hard to say. I don't know I'm for sure. I'm always skeptical of that because yeah. I, I think people underestimate just how much planning has to go in into picking these prices, how much budgeting, how much forecasting, how much market. Uh, I'm not saying it's impossible for them to change a price at the last minute, but I, I'm 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 always think people think this is a whole lot easier. Like, yeah, they just changed the graphic card. Like, there's a lot more that goes into it than that. Uh, so. They may have had some wiggle room, or they may have been always like, we'll just match whatever Microsoft comes with and work it out later. Who knows? Yeah. Also, I mean, like you say, it's impossible to know. And also, I agree, it's usually more complicated than we give it credit for. But um, Sony had a, a real point of pride in the last generation. They did not lose money as a loss leader with PlayStation last generation. They made money from the get-go and didn't, didn't lose money up, up front and then sell games to make up the difference. Um, so that's a big success for them. Nintendo already kind of does this already and does so successfully. I think Microsoft is absolutely lost leading their product, and it may or may not have forced Sony to do the same. Impossible to say for sure, but I will say this. Those are exciting numbers for PlayStation, given what everybody thought they were going to be. Those are all at least 100 sometimes $200 less than what we were thinking. So I feel like they're in it to win it. Well, we had some Apple announcements. Uh, it's been an announcement week. <laughs> it just keeps on coming. Um, and we'll have some later in the show. But uh, yesterday was Apple Watch's big announcement. Apple and Singapore have partnered to reward Apple Watch owners for healthy activity, with residents earning up to 380 Singapore dollars for activities like meditation or walks, better quality sleep, using a new app called Lumi Health, which also features games and challenges designed by doctors and fitness experts. Lumi Health goes live in the App Store in October. When I first read this, I thought it was odd because I live in a country without nationalized health care. But when I thought about yeah. it from the perspective of, oh, the government of Singapore provides the health care, it all made sense because there are plenty of health insurance providers in the United States that give you a discount if you use a fitness tracker, right? It may not be, I don't know, actually it may not be that much more than 380 Singapore dollars. That's that's pretty close to parity with the U.S. Uh, so it's, it's you know, at the high $200 U.S., uh, I, so it makes perfect sense for me is what I would like to say uh, that the government of Singapore as the insurance operator, as the healthcare operator would say like, yeah, if we can do things to encourage people to be healthier, that lowers costs on the healthcare system as a whole and is worth more than $380, I would expect. I, my uh, first feeling on this was like, we just, I just heard from my auto insurance company and my rep was just telling me about some stuff I can do to lower my rates. Ah, and it's like, like hey, tracking your driving. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And he says, and if you put this thing in your car, uh, it'll show where you are all the time. And so you can more prove that you were, you know, being slow or fat, you know, whatever, whatever the we're deal driving was. Driving to work. Yeah. Cause you exactly. work at home. All that. So stuff, all yeah. this is, is just shifting it because it's a nationalized healthcare system. You've just shifted that burden of incentives and so on onto the government. And so it makes perfect sense to me that they'd want to do that. Lower rates, save money. Go for it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, honestly, I I don't really have a problem with uh, you know helping people stay fit type thing. That said, I personally, right now, I have an issue with my my Fitbit Versa Two. I'm getting a replacement from the company because the heart rate is just it's it's messed up. It isn't correct ever, and I just wonder, you know. If, you're getting financial incentives for doing things right, and you're using, you know, these gadgets from various companies to try to track you and get lots of data while doing so, and aren't necessarily always accurate, and are kind of new technology in general. Mm, little iffy. Quick update on the TikTok situation. Uh, we still don't know anything official, but the Financial Times sources are saying Oracle will actually get a stake in a newly formed company under ByteDance to be headquartered in the United States. That company would run TikTok outside of China. Oracle would handle all U.S. user data, which would no longer be backed up in Singapore. It would only be in the U.S., and it would be on Oracle's systems. Uh, Financial Times sources don't know the size of Oracle's minority stake, but it would help distinguish the new TikTok entity from its owner, ByteDance. 
this could be spun to be closer to how Lenovo operates, with headquarters in the U.S., but also headquarters in China, with significant U.S. stakes from Oracle, Sequoia, and General Atlantic. That makes this U.S.-based TikTok look more American. We'll know something solid when the Committee on Foreign Investment in the U.S. rules later this week and sends its recommendation to the president, uh, who will do whatever he wants with it. Uh, even if CIFA says this is okay, it doesn't mean the president will accept it. We'll see. Yeah. Sarah, are you, are you still using TikTok? I, I still use it all the time. Get a lot of funny puppy things and stuff. Is it still yeah, your jam? Yeah, it do is. You think, do you think one day you and I, as fans <laughs> of the service, will look back on this and say, I can't believe we got all worked up about it? A thing I do. Like this? Yes, yeah. I, 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 at once sort of love TikTok, even though I was a little late to the game, and I enjoy it to the point where sometimes I'm like, no TikTok today, Sarah, because <laughs> it's just it's such a time suck, and yeah. it's so fun, and it's just great, uh, and there's so many creatives there, and I want to know them all, but uh, but yes, I think that we will look back on on this whole thing, and hey, you know, maybe it's a precedent for companies in the future maybe it's just it's just a tiktok thing hard to say but this is a story that will not die it'd be interesting to see if uh companies in the future when a, a new thing like this is launched even in a, uh, on foreign soil or in a country where concerns are had here about security like we are with china that maybe they do this stuff ahead of time like there's some forethought about what if the databases were in every country, and and what if only oh, the no, only thing no, we did? Yeah, no Chinese company is going to launch things the way TikTok did. They're probably not even going to acquire a thing the way they acquired Musically. Is this, this yeah. is it's too early to say because we don't know what this deal is. But once this right. deal is done, it's going to change how Chinese companies operate uh, in the United States. Absolutely, no doubt about that. Well, let's talk about Apple and some poor timing by some people's accounts. Tuesday, Apple gave developers a 24-hour countdown to the release of iOS 14. But Apple hadn't made a GM or Golden Master release of iOS available to developers prior to the announcement. So they heard it when you heard it, meaning that devs had uh, limited time to submit updated apps and fix issues and take advantage of the new features. Updates to iPad, I, or excuse me, iPad OS, TV OS, and Watch OS are also kind of in the same boat. James wrote in uh, to add a little bit to this conversation, says we have had beta versions of Xcode 12 and iOS 14 for weeks, uh, he, but we did not get access to the GM release of Xcode for iOS until 9.15. Beta versions of Xcode cannot be used in app submission. You must get the GM, or the Gold Master again, that we didn't have until the day before the launch to the public. Apple's announcement that iOS would be released on 9.16 shocked and angered the iOS development community. Thank you, James, uh, for sharing that with us. And and yeah, I don't understand why Apple did this. I mean, granted, as a consumer, my first reaction was like, oh, we're getting it tomorrow. That's cool. But they didn't have to. If they had said, you're getting iOS 14 next week, I would have been like, oh, OK, I'll be ready for that. And that's usually what they do when they announce new iPhones. They usually put these at the same time. They'll say, the new iPhone's coming out next Friday and iOS 14, the new iOS, will launch two days before that. That's generally what they do, right? That's not what they did here. And uh, developers having no heads up, even if if Apple had told developers last week, like, hey, here's your gold master, and it would have tipped their hand, we still wouldn't have known exactly when the full version was coming to consumers, uh, but at least would have given developers a chance to submit. Again, they had plenty of time to get their app ready. That's not the problem. It's not that the app isn't ready to run on iOS 14. It's that they aren't allowed to submit it to the App Store until they get the gold master so they can certify it and validate it and all that stuff on the gold master. And they didn't get the gold master until yesterday. And now iOS 14 is going to be on my phone today. That's just, I don't, I don't understand that. Yeah. It's yeah. curious. It's curious timing. I, I know a lot of developers are like, what is going on? This is, you know, this is really, really botched rollout. Maybe it, you know, I, I'd love for anybody with inside Apple knowledge to let me know why this happened the way it did. But yeah, but, but uh, oh, and I'm I'm seeing some some people saying some stuff in our Twitch chat uh, that imply like, oh, so you're the beta tester. No, no, no. This isn't a the iOS isn't ready. This isn't even we didn't have our app ready for iOS 14. This was we weren't allowed to submit it. And mm -hmm. now you're saying we have to submit it immediately. And of course, anytime you submit stuff on a gold master, you might find a few more bugs. Like this isn't about reliability. This is about you not giving developers the time that you require of them based on your own policies. That's, it's that's like saying, I mean. hey, uh, we got a magazine and you're all writers and photographers for this magazine. Oh, and by the way, it's landing tomorrow. 
Well, that means everyone's got to get their stuff done in 24 hours. Like it's yeah, a and we really told weird you thing. What the that... assignment was, and right. we and we know you wrote up versions, right, right. but we won't accept the you know the final until yeah, it's just crazy. It's very strange because I don't know what the advantage was. There was no like surprise cool product rollout announcement. We all right. knew what iOS 14 was. We've already seen features, and people were beta testing it at home. And we're not even getting the iPad Air till next month, so it's not like oh, iPad OS got to have that on the new it's iPad weird. Air. It's really weird. Yeah, don't know why they did it. Well, maybe it was watchOS. They're they're putting the new watch out later this week. They had to have watchOS seven, and if you have watchOS seven, you got to put out everything else. But again, then just give everybody the gold master earlier. Yeah, give your GM to the GMs. All right, folks. Uh, if you want to get all the tech headlines each day in about five minutes, be sure to subscribe to DailyTechHeadlines.com. Like Sarah said, a lot of announcements happening, including Facebook Connect, uh, which is the new name for Facebook announcing Oculus things. Sarah, tell us what they announced. Well, Facebook announced the Oculus Quest 2. We saw some leaked videos, so not a huge surprise, but resolution is officially improved by 50% to 1832 by 1920 fast LCDs and a 90 hertz refresh rate eventually, although it will only be 72 hertz at launch, so 90 going forward at some point. Six gigs of RAM, Snapdragon XR2 platform, the Quest 2 is also 10% lighter at 503 grams, so 503 grams rather, so a little easier on your head, not as front heavy for those of us who thought, well, it would be nice if this was a little bit lighter. Head strap is now flexible and not stiff, and the controllers are slightly larger and have a thumb rest. You can also get different face plates options to uh, fit your head better. You know, if you're wearing glasses or you just got a big head or whatever. With the Quest 2 improved, the Rift S will stop being available next spring. That's We knew that was happening, but, you know, it's 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 officially happening. You can pre-order the Oculus Quest 2 now, shipping October 13th for $299 with 64 gigs of storage or $399 for 256 gigs. The link feature for connecting the Quest to a PC by USB for playing PC VR games is coming out of beta for wide availability this autumn. Facebook will sell a specifically designed 5-meter link cable for $79. Jeez. I know. And you Facebook don't have to use that one, but if you want the really, you know, the perfectly designed one, yeah, that's very Apple of them. Mm. It, right, yeah. right? Yeah, $80, $80 cable. Facebook <laughs> also announced other accessories sold separately, an Elite Strap. It's a padded plastic strap with more support, selling for $49. A version with an extra battery for counterweight and doubling the runtime cost $129. And Logitech earbuds for $50 or over-the-ear headphones for $100 with custom length cables and straps to fit nicely inside the headset for those of you who care about audio in your quest, which I don't blame you for doing. Don't forget... New Oculus users have to use a Facebook account to set up an Oculus profile, and boy, does that tick off some people. A uh, separate profile on Facebook, so it's not the same as your Facebook profile, but it is uh, it is uh, turning some heads. Yeah. Uh, the headlines of this are generally favorable. The Verge uh, says, uh, yeah, oh, wait, it wasn't The Verge. It was Engadget uh, says... You know, Facebook announces Oculus Quest 2. Uh, it's really nice. Uh, CNET was was pro positive about it. But man, Ars Technica was not. They Ars sure Technica weren't. was like, no, this is bad. Don't get it. Uh, and a lot of it was based on the fact that you have to have that Facebook login. But the review was, we do not recommend the $299 Oculus Quest 2 as your next VR system by Sam Makovich. Yeah, one of the things that was called out, or a few things that were called out in that article, which really did turn my head a little bit, were um, areas that sounds like they may have made technical shortcuts. And one of them in particular is a little freaky, and that is that the uh, hands, uh, the, the controllers rather, don't have as many sensors and as many sort of minute points of articulation when using them. And the example they used was go play Beat Saber on an Oculus Quest 1 and then see how you do and then go do it on a two, and while not the most scientific test, they could tell a distinct difference in control. They felt like they had a lot less control in the second category. So that kind of stuff bothers me. The Facebook thing is almost its own topic and can be argued in lots of ways, and I think it probably should be, But and I'm annoyed they're doing it too. But some of these technical limitations or these things that seem like maybe they're just trying to save money to get that low price point, 
those are concerning. And I don't see those in other reviews yet. So what I'm trying to do now is balance this ours review with others and see kind of if I can find some middle ground or get a better picture. Yeah, the but Verge says better, cheaper VR. And Gadget says the VR headset to rule them all. Uh, new Oculus Quest 2 is the best way to VR by far, says Wired. Uh, this, you know, XDA developers is just factual. Uh, a Snapdragon XR2, 90 hertz refresh rate for $299. But nobody seems to have that much problem because there are a lot of improvements. Yes, there are a couple of these technical issues that you're that you're mentioning where they pulled back, but mostly they made it better. No. Sort of yeah. Well, I mean, it's something like you know, Scott, your the example of Beat Saber is like you do notice when it's off. Yeah. And if it's a little bit more off than it was before, it's like, yeah, you know, it's like, it feels janky. I think a lot of people are focusing on the like 300 bucks. Okay. Yeah. You know, now, now, now we're getting somewhere. Six and it's gigs a of RAM, a better yeah. resolution. I know it's not OLED, but it's fast LCD. And that's what yeah. all the VR systems are switching to. Like yeah, these are all and, improvements. Yeah. yeah. And I mean, even, you know, even with my, my quest, which is obviously the uh, 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 initial version. I mean, it's heavy. And I kind of wish it was lighter, but I'm sort of used to it. But I, I would be happy with something lighter. The mm -hmm. strap, the strap situation. I, you know, th there was some complaints, especially in the R's article about this. And I'm like, you know, I mean, every time I put it on, I kind of have to, you know, make sure it's it's on exactly right. Uh, you know, it's it's. I'm not sure how much that's really going to bother the general public. And particularly well, and the, people who are, you know, getting these for the first time. The yeah. Engadget article I read uh, was claiming that the flexible strap was an improvement. Like, we don't have that stiff strap that was uncomfortable for me. So, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I mean, your mileage may vary on some of this stuff. I haven't seen anybody else uh, saying that the lack of sensors makes the, the controllers laggy. Uh, maybe they just didn't notice it. I don't know. Yeah, I want to uh, have some friends over at Tested.com. I want to ask them um, and trust their opinion. So I just kind of want to get a better picture of it. But... Man, when you see a headline that literally says, we do not recommend the 299 Oculus Quest 2 as your next VR system, as the headline, they're, they're either really, really disappointed with what they found or, or something's weird. And I, 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 I don't know. It just really freaked me out to see this review. But uh, the stuff they describe in here, like all the spec improvements Tom just mentioned and rattled off, faster, smaller, lighter, Sounds better. So I don't, I don't know, man. I, I just feel really torn on this one because I do really believe the Quest in particular and now the Quest 2 in theory, they're the forerunners of what VR will become. A, a portable, not tethered to stuff, no cables. They'll just get smaller and better and it's the right path. So I hope that this isn't a step backwards like some reviewers are saying, and I hope it's a step forward like others are saying. I guess we'll see. Well, Scott, you might be excited while you're playing Beat Saber and sweating up a storm that Facebook also announced Oculus Move, a system-level feature that can track how many calories you've burned while playing a game and display stats in real time with in-game overlays. A limited number of users will get to try the feature later this year, and I hope I'm one of them. Yes, really make Sarah one of them, because you're not using Beat Saber, but you're using, what is the one you use? Supernatural. Well, I yeah. play I play a little Beat Saber, but right, right. one of the things with Supernatural that's just annoying is that I wear a Fitbit and Supernatural just doesn't it's not compatible. So they they you can't track the heart uh, heart rate stuff is not trackable the way that it is with some other smart watches and fitness trackers. And it's not the end of the world, but Sometimes I feel like I'm doing really well, and I'd like to know <laughs> how many calories that I've burned. <laughs> and you know, to to be able to have this natively inside, you, you know, the Oculus platform itself is pretty cool. Yeah, it's a little confusing on the naming because they're Oculus Move, Sony PlayStation. You have to have Move controllers to use the games that require it. So you have the PlayStation Move. It's just a little. I don't know. I hate when names cross over like that. Everybody's got a Plus service now. It's getting crazy yeah. out there, guys. Yeah. Everything's Move and Plus. Yeah. Uh, well, we're not done yet. Facebook also announced its first pair of consumer augmented reality glasses will be releasing next year as a result of an experimental research prototype it calls Project Aria. About 100 Facebook employees and contractors in Silicon Valley and Seattle will be the first to test out Project Aria, which is the sensor array to be used in the AR glasses. That array has spatial awareness, GPS, image sensors, apparently some kind of eye tracking based on claims of tracking eye movement. The employee testers will capture data for mapping the environment in places 
uh, like satellites and cars can't see. The consumer version of the actual glasses will arrive next year, designed in conjunction with Exelor Luxotica. And the first frames will be put out by the uh, Ray Ban brand, which you probably know pretty well. <laughs> and those commercial glasses may not have all the bells and whistles of, you know, the glasses, but we'll see. Facebook's VR and AR VP Andrew Bosworth told CNET, quote, the next one or two years, I think I'd be pretty surprised to see full AR glasses in the industry. So there, there. this is a long-term project. Yeah, this is, uh, Facebook likes to do this, and we're going to get another example of this uh, in one of their other announcements out of Connect, uh, where they, they like to announce concepts maybe before they're really ready. Now, they actually have a product that they say is going to happen with Ray-Ban, uh, next year. And I think what they're trying to do is defer that criticism of this, these pair of glasses looks awful. They're like, don't worry, we've got Ray-Ban designing the real ones. Uh, but Bosworth is basically admitting like, yeah, but that's not going to have all the functionality because we're still one or two years away from having all the stuff that we really can do with this yet. Yeah, I'd wear these. Just putting that out there. I'd wear these ugly ones. It's fine. Yeah. Well, I mean, Scott, if you're, if you're into it, Maybe you want a little augmented reality sooner than when the cool Ray-Ban versions of these glasses come out. Facebook will expand its third-party AR creators effort. Effects created in Facebook's Spark AR will be used, will be able to be used in Messenger and Portal, in addition to Facebook and Instagram starting next year. Well, mm. at least I can okay. have fun well, while least I look. There's, there's some <laughs> augmented reality we can use uh, sure. next year, but that's when the Ray-Bans are shipping. All right, what else? <laughs> what else you got, Facebook? Oh, if you thought the quest sounded maybe too fun or too horrible, if you're Ars Technica, Facebook also shared early demos of Infinite Office, meant to make your Oculus Quest more productive. Facebook is working with Logitech to recognize and render custom keyboards inside a virtual environment. You can then work across multiple customizable, customizable screens inside VR. Live feeds from onboard cameras would integrate the virtual office into a worker's real home. This immediately reminded me of an F8 uh, demonstration they made a few years ago of, of their avatar chat. Uh, where they're like, pretty soon in virtual reality, we'll all be wandering around like avatars, talking to each other in Facebook instead of posting. And of course, that hasn't happened. Uh, I don't know that this will happen. I I do I have to say what I did like about this was the idea that like you could have huge screens without actually having to have huge screens take up room in your home office. That, yeah. yeah, that's appealing. Yeah. I, I also have a theory. Work that I well, but it's appealing. I have a fear, theory. Uh, Low-level lawsuit from Microsoft. If this takes off, they will sue to get the trademark name uh, Infinite Office to remove the word office. Just calling it now. Five bucks. That's what I'll put down. <laughs> what What would it be? Anything else. But Microsoft's infinite, just like, we, you can't infinite. use office. Oh. That sounds like our thing. And they'll, they'll sue them. It's going to happen. Yeah, I don't know, man. I mean, much <laughs> as I love my Quest, I don't want to wear it all day. It really, really, you know, it makes some marks on the face. Yep. Uh, all right, everybody, join in the conversation at our Discord. If you have thoughts on Facebook's announcements or any of their other announcements, Sony's announcements, it's been quite a week, and it's only Wednesday. And you can join by linking to a Patreon account at patreon.com slash DTNS. Let's check out the mailbag. Got one from Tony. This was in uh, response to Apple's Fitness Plus subscription. And we, we were making some comparisons to something like Peloton and saying, wow, people could save a lot of money. Tony says, Peloton offers a Peloton digital subscription, which doesn't require any of their equipment. That subscription is currently $12.99 per month and is a more apples to apples, hee <laughs> hee, comparison to Fitness Plus. The fact that most people don't know that Peloton offers this low, low cost option is a marketing failure for them, but I wouldn't be surprised if they start pushing it more now that a competitive option is available. I'm curious about a fitness. I'm curious about Fitness Plus, but Peloton currently releases multiple new workouts of most types daily. They have a lot of live, live classes. There's a community aspect as, aspect to Peloton that Apple isn't offering. I mean, it may, Tony, but we don't really know yet. Uh, Tony says, it wouldn't surprise me if Peloton lowers the price of the digital-only subscription to compete and starts to get the word out more about its availability. Yeah, I mean, where I think Tony might have been going is there's a community already in Peloton, and Apple's starting from scratch, so they don't have that mm -hmm. yet, right? Sure. Whereas right now, you can join Peloton, and there'll be a bunch of other Peloton users who've been there a long time. Uh, my, my wife uses Peloton, and she was looking at this Fitness Plus going like, 
yeah, I, I, why, why would I do this? Why would I switch to this? So, uh, and thank you for reminding us about the uh, the non equipment. I remember that they did that, but I didn't realize it was only twelve ninety nine a month. Still three dollars more than Apple, but not that much more expensive. And maybe Peloton will even change their price. Ross wrote in about the iPad Air versus the Pro and says the Pro still wins on storage and size. We were trying to reckon our brain like, okay, what does the Pro give you that the Air, the new Air doesn't? Uh, there you go, storage and size. The Air goes to a max of 256 gigabytes versus a terabyte for the Pro. And the Air only has a 10.9 inch screen. Uh, and I think I think I mentioned this in the pre-show, but I may not have mentioned it in DTNS because the Pro obviously has those bigger 11 and 12.9 inch screens. Uh, Ross says, I would imagine these are going to be the key differentiators for someone still looking for a Pro level device. And the Pro also has the multi-lens camera array. I still get stuck on the fact that, yeah, but the best processor, the best performance, but you're right. These are features that are definitive factors for a lot of people. Uh, Ross says, have a great day from unseasonably and unreasonably warm UK. Thank you, Ross. Good, good stuff. Excellent. Thank you, Ross. Also, thanks, Tony. Thanks to everybody who writes in to us and gives us good feedback. Also, shout out to patrons at our master and grandmaster levels, including Dustin Campbell, Andrew Bradley, and Brad with Brad. two Ds, which is just a cool way to spell Brad. Also, thanks to Scott Johnson for being with us today. Scott, what is new? Well, I'll tell you what's new. Actually, a quick thing that may matter to artists, the iPad Pro uh, has a 120 hertz refresh screen. This new iPad, uh, the the new one, the, the the Air does not. So they mm. opted not to have the 120 hertz not refresh. Not buttery which, smooth. Good point. Yeah, so for artists, huge deal. Anyway, uh, lots of cool stuff going on, especially over at Current Geek Chronicles, our cool eight-part series that we just put out, thanks to the support of many listeners. And episode four just landed. Uh, Tom, any thoughts on how we uh, did episode four? Oh, we zoomed and enhanced. <laughs> we did. We totally did. Have you seen a movie lately where you're like, man, this is zooming and enhancing. Or the Apple announcement yesterday where they mentioned it. They did. They even made their own joke. Zoom and enhance ripped from today's headlines. But if you always wondered why movies and TV get it wrong and wondered if we might actually get to what we all want out of Zoom and Enhance, you might be surprised about what we cover on there. So check it out. It's at currentgeek.com or wherever you get your podcast. Just search for Current Geek Chronicles or just Current Geek will get you there. Uh, but we want you to hear it. Let us know what you think. That's currentgeek.com. For everything else I'm about, check us out over at frogpants.com. That's Folks, it. we want your feedback. Every year we do a DTNS survey to ask you about how we can make the show even better. So please head over to dailytechnewsshow.com slash survey and take a couple minutes to fill it out. Thank you. Uh, to our patrons, you are the batteries that power this show. Thanks to everybody who supports the show. You get special mentions in our thoughts every day at patreon.com slash DTNS. And if you have feedback for us, boy, do we like to read it. Our email address is feedback at dailytechnewsshow.com. We're also live Monday through Friday, 4.30 p.m. Eastern, 2030 UTC. Find out more at dailytechnewsshow.com slash live. Back tomorrow with Justin Robert Young. Talk to you then. This show is part of the Frog Pants Network. Get more at frogpants.com. Diamond Club hopes you have enjoyed this program. <laughs>